the first instruction that God is giving us tonight is to commit ourselves continually to the ministry of the word and prayer. Please write it down. The first prophetic instruction to our global family and to all who are connected to the body of believers, even at this period, after today, officially we're on break until I will announce the resumption shortly in January. It's important that whilst we are away from ourselves physically, have this at the back of your mind, that the ministry of the word and the ministry of prayer is mandatory for the growth and the excelling of any and all believers. Acts chapter 6 and verse 4. The Bible says, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. So you must give yourself continually. Say continually. Not once a week. No, not twice a week. Not three times a week. Continually. It must become habitual. In fact, it is safe to say the ministry of the word and prayer should become an addiction in your life. That is a wonderful addiction. It's not the type who will cast away. That is the kind that is needed. Hallelujah. That you are addicted, like someone will be addicted to drugs or addicted to whatever it is. They have become a slave to it. When you become a slave to the ministry of prayer and a slave to the ministry of the word, it's like the clay in the hand of a potter. Now you can be built and molded to become as intended by God. Say continually. Many of us do not pray. Some study, read books, but they do not pray. I made that observation over the weekend others pray they do not study others study but they do not pray there is nowhere in scripture where the believer is given the liberty to choose between the ministry of prayer or the ministry of the word is wrong mentorship you never are given the liberty to choose between prayer or the word are we together now yes god when he manifested as the word incarnate, he called himself the word of God, the logos of God, John 1.1. 1, 1. But then he said, my house shall be called the house of prayer for all nations. The life of Jesus captured the relevance of a rich life of prayer and a rich life of the word. The, I think the most concise blend of prayer and the word as I know and as I've studied in scripture, is found in Matthew chapter 4, the whole temptation of Jesus. I'm not teaching that. I've done teachings on that. But you will see that when Jesus was tempted of the devil, there was a healthy synergy between prayer and the ministry of the word that helped him to stand, survive, overcome, thrive through that temptation. And all through his earth walk, we see the word, we see prayer. So give yourself continually to the word and prayer. Let me tell you the truth. It takes grace and discipline to be prayerful. It takes grace and discipline. Grace comes from God. Discipline comes from your will. Write it down, please. It takes grace and discipline to be prayerful and to be a wordful individual. It doesn't just take grace alone. The enabling grace comes from God. But the discipline, discipline here expressed as the staying power. It is not always convenient to pray. No. No. It is not always convenient to fast. It is not always convenient to study. It takes time to pray. It takes time to study. It takes time to do all of these exercises. But you are motivated by number one, your love for God. And number two, what happens to you when you engage this? Look up please. Ladies and gentlemen. How many of you know that it takes time to cook a serious meal that you serve kings? You cannot cook a meal for kings in 10 minutes, no matter what you are rushing. You take the time, you want to do a proper three-course meal. They stay in the kitchen almost forever. But when they come out of that kitchen, you smile all through that meal. Are we together? They meticulously follow, make sure that everything is in place. There are certain restaurants where before you finish talking, the food is ready and you struggle. This one is not done. This one is not done because they were in a hurry. It takes time. If you are not willing to give time, you cannot grow. It takes time to bath. I hope it takes time for you. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Are we together? 
I, I joked one time on this in Zaria that there are people who go to bath and you are literally gisting with someone in the room from the bathroom. And the only thing you hear is just, wow, water has been poured and the person rushes out and you're like, what did you do? That's it? Come on, respect your body. <laughs> Hallelujah. Takes time. Give yourself continually to prayer and the word. Number two. Invest time, energy, and resources in your health. 